Hopefully, you're pretty familiar with the idea of differentiation by this point. Well, integration is simply the opposite of differentiation, which means we're starting with the gradient of a line and going back to the original equation of the line. So if you know how to differentiate, then integration is not going to be much trouble at all for you. Every integration question begins with an integral sign. Whenever you see one of these, you know you're looking at an integration. The equation we're integrating is ax to the power of n, where a and n are just some numbers, and the dx simply means that we're integrating with respect to x. That part is super important. And here is what we get when we integrate this thing. What exactly have we done to the equation in this single step? We started by raising the power by 1. Remember that whenever we differentiate, the last thing we do is decrease the power by 1. So when we do the reverse, it makes sense that the first thing we do is increase the power. Then we've simply divided the whole term by that new power. This is the opposite of multiplying that we do whenever we differentiate. So when it boils down to it, integration is really nothing more than the opposite process of differentiation. That's why we sometimes call what we've just done anti-differentiation. But we aren't done yet. Remember how, if there are any numbers without x's in them in an equation, these vanish when we differentiate. For example, if we have y equals x squared plus 2, and differentiate this, we'd get dy dx equals 2x, and so the 2 simply disappeared. What this means is that when we start out with the gradient, we have no way of telling if there was actually some number on the end of it that disappeared when the original equation got differentiated. So we always need to add a plus c onto the end of our integrations. That means the real answer to our old problem is this a times x to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c. So when we need to integrate something, we just anti-differentiate the equation, and then we finish up by sticking a plus c onto the end of it. Let's look at an actual integration problem. The integral of 3x squared dx. The gradient equation that we're integrating here is 3x squared. We'll start out by increasing the power by 1, 3x cubed. Then we need to divide the entire thing by the new power, 3. 3x cubed divided by 3. And the final thing to do, and it's extremely important that you never forget to do this, is to chuck on that plus c to the end of our answer. 3x cubed divided by 3 plus c. Since 3 divided by 3 is just 1, what we should also do to our answer is simplify it, so that finally it ends up looking like this x cubed plus c. If you ever aren't sure whether or not you've integrated correctly, then the great news for you is that you can check simply by taking whatever answer you churned out and differentiating that answer. Let's do it here. 3x squared. And what do you know? This thing is what we started with. So hey, looks like we do know a thing or two about integration. Being able to integrate an equation sure is great and all, but wouldn't it be just a whole lot nicer if we weren't having to stick that ugly plus c onto the end of our integrations all the time? Well thankfully for you and us, there's a way we can sort out what c is. Let's start with a kind of regular integration problem that you'll come to adore. The integral of 2x minus 3 dx. When we integrate something longer like this, we can just integrate each term separately and then string up the answer. So 2x gets integrated into x squared, and 3 gets integrated into 3x. And of course, there needs to be a plus c stuck onto the end of the answer. All in all, this is what we should be ending up with. y equals x squared minus 3x plus c. But we're still left with the problem of having plus c, aren't we? Here's the crucial piece of information that we're given to get rid of c. The line passes through the point 2, 3. So all we've been given is a point that the line passes through. What we can do now is to replace the x's in our equation with 2's, and replace the y with a 3. Let's see what we get. 
3 equals 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus c equals 4 minus 6 plus c. And now we just move the numbers around like in a simple algebraic equation until we end up with something that looks like c equals 5. Great. Now that we know for sure that c equals 5, we can write out the final equation in full without having plus c on the end of it. y equals x squared minus 3x plus 5. And suddenly we're all done. Even though we spent all this time saying that your integrations always need a plus c stuck onto the end of them, actually you don't always need to follow this rule. The situation where you don't need plus c is when you get given a definite integral to solve. Definite integrals all look like this. The integral from x equals 0 to x equals 2 of 2x minus 1 dx. So this doesn't look any different from the integrations that you've seen a bunch of times before, apart from those two little numbers at the bottom and the top of the integral sign. Whenever there are numbers, this stops being a regular indefinite integration and transforms into a definite integration. How are definite integrations different to the regular kind? Well, there's no plus c for one thing. We also solve them very differently, and we end up with a number instead of an equation. The first thing we do is actually integrate 2x minus 1. We also need to place square brackets around the answer, like this. And those two numbers get relocated to the right end of the equation. So what's next? We need to now substitute those numbers, 2 and 0, into our answer. First we replace all of the x's with the 2, since 2 is the top number. Now we need to replace the x's with zeros, and then subtract this from the thing we just made. 2 squared minus 2 minus 0 squared minus 0 equals 2 minus 0 equals 2. And so when we solve this, we always end up with a number, which here was 2. This is the biggest difference between a definite integral, which is what we just solved, and the regular indefinite integrals. When we get a problem with a definite integral, the answer will always just be a number. Let's look at another one. The integral from x equals 2 to x equals 5 of x squared plus 2x minus 1 dx. Once again, we know this must be a definite integration question, because there are those two numbers above and below the integral sign. So our next move is to integrate this without bothering with plus c, and putting some square brackets around the answer. Great, the last step is to swap the x's for 5's, and then swap them for 2's, and take away the second thing from the first. Done. Remember, integration is the opposite of differentiation. We integrate terms by raising their power by 1 and then dividing them by that new power. Don't forget to add the constant c. Indefinite integrals produce an equation, whereas definite integrals produce a number.